Hey there, welcome to Mike's Collection, episode 226. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is my best of 2022. This is round three of a series of six videos I plan to do, which I'm basically looking at all of the figures I purchased in 2022, and I'm trying to whittle them down to get my best 20 figures of 2022. Now, considering I had about 360 figures this year, I've kind of broken them up into groups of 60, and I'm just doing a series of videos where I'm picking figures out, getting down to the best figures, and they're going to advance to another round. And uh, yeah, that's the gist of it. I'm going to keep this intro short because I've already explained this in the first two series of the videos. If you haven't watched them, go watch round one and round two. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, why don't we dive into this brand new batch of 60 figures that I have sitting right here on my desk. So here we are with another batch of 60 figures for me to go through and start eliminating some of these figures from my best of the year list. So it's more of the same. We've got a lot of reaction figures up along the front here, followed by some Masters of the Universe, uh, a couple of Marvel Legends, some other kind of random things. But for the first time out of these, these three videos that I've shot so far, we finally have some G.I. Joe classified figures that are working their way into this list. It's one of my favorite collections, and I got quite a few of them this year, um, but they all came pretty late in the year, so we didn't see any of them in the first two videos. But uh, yeah, so good mix of stuff again. You'll notice in here I got a couple of dinosaurs. I went through a little dinosaur phase when the uh, latest Jurassic Park movie came out, and even though the movie kind of sucked, I still really like some of these toys. All right, so let's get started. So right off of the bat, um, I usually start with the reaction figures because they're the smallest and I've got them up front. And as I've said in the past videos, it's pretty unlikely for a little reaction figure uh, to make my best of the year list just because of how simple they are. And there's just a lot of really detailed, really articulated figures back there that are more likely to beat them out. But there have been two of them so far, Duke and Grimlock, that have made it through to the next round. So um, right off the bat here, though, I'm going to start with a couple that don't qualify. So this year, um, I found a cool little toy store in my area that I didn't know about before called The Lost World. Um, they had a lot of retro toys. They were priced a little out of my price range for a lot of the stuff I would have been interested in. But I always feel compelled to buy something when I go into a shop like that. So I picked up this Cthulhu. Now, I'm going to say reaction figure, but he's not really a reaction figure because reaction is the brand by Super 7, and this was not produced by Super 7. So this is a cool little five-point articulation figure but it was not released in 2022 so uh, he's eliminated and the other thing i bought at the store that day was this lilu reaction figure so this is an official reaction figure from super 7. it's lilu from the fifth element as played by uh, mila jovovich but this is an old figure this came out years ago so she's eliminated too now you see i've got some marvel figures here so these are little five points of articulation figures Technically, they're seven points because they have a swivel at their forearm. Um, I really like these figures. Um, but Vision, even though he's a really nice looking figure, it's probably the best Vision I have in my collection. Even though I have a few in the six inch scale, I think this is the nicest looking as far as colors and design. I think this was a 2021 release as well. So I'm going to eliminate him. Now, as much as this is a nice figure, I just don't care that much about Vision. So he wouldn't have made it to the end anyway. But I think he's out just based on his uh, release date. Um, what else we got here? Here's a couple silly ones I bought. I always loved Emperor Zurg from the uh, Toy Story 2. And so when the new Buzz Lightyear movie came out this year, which I still haven't seen, um, we got a bunch of new Lightyear figures. And I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on Lightyear figures, but I bought this cool little Emperor Zurg. He was just kind of fun. But again, this is like a this is a children's toy, which I know is funny because you could say these are all children's toys. But this really is like a little kid's toy, and I just bought him. He was just a couple of bucks. But yeah, he's definitely not toy of the year. And he came packaged with his little buddy here, which is called a Zyclops. So again, just a fun little figure to throw on my desk, but definitely not uh, toy of the year material. Um, you'll notice I've got quite a few of these little Godzilla figures. Now, Super 7 is producing reaction figures of Godzilla, and you're going to see those probably in my next video, I think. 
But uh, in this video here, I've got a bunch of figures from Mezco's Five Points collection. Five points because they have five points of articulation. So they've made some different... Oh, shit. Here we go. Dominoes. Um, his tails keep swinging around, knocking everybody down. So this is uh, Manila. This is Godzilla's son, I guess. So it's kind of cool to get a little figure of him. He has interchangeable arms, an interchangeable head with little smoke effects. Fun little guy, but uh, not toy of the year. One thing I want to mention about these five points figures, which you'll notice as we look at more of them, is even though they are five points for articulation, they are not like the simplified designs that we usually see on reaction figures. These guys are pretty screen accurate. Like it's a really nice sculpt and really nice paint job on these figures. So Manila is not going to make it, but that's not to say that uh, another one won't move forward. So now here's Mothra. Now this might not be Mothra as you're used to seeing her. You know, she's usually presented in her moth form. But in all those early Godzilla movies, she usually started out in larva mode. Even in the uh, recent uh, American-made movie, King of the Monsters, she started out as a larva. Anyway, it's cool to get a little action figure of larva mode, but it's basically just an unarticulated, you know, turd. And uh, she's definitely not my action figure of the year, so she can go. Um, now this guy here... Now... I've only put, this is Captain Olimar from the Nintendo game Pikmin, and I put him out here by himself, but really, he's kind of got a secret weapon in that he came packaged in a little box set here, and he, so he came with, I think it's 12 little Pikmin characters, so I would kind of count these all as one, and it's a great little set. Um, I love the Pikmin games. These characters are all super cute. You know, Captain Ol Olimar is really cute too. Uh, not really articulated. I think his head spins, but that's about it. But as, uh, as neat as this was, and I was happy to pick this up this year as a kind of a fun little oddity, even with all those Pikmin, it's not going to qualify as my best of the year list. So little Olimar, unfortunately, has to go. Um, we've got a bunch of G.I. Joe reaction figures here. Now here we've got some more troopers. Um, if you've watched my past videos, I've previously talked about the uh, the G.I. Joe Sailors um, and the Cobra Shock Troopers. So Super 7's been doing a good job of giving us characters that might have been in the background of some cartoons, but never really had an action figure before. So this time around, we have the G.I. Joe Combat Engineers, which are female, and they were available in multiple different variations with different skin tones and different... Uh, haircuts. So you'll notice I've got one white girl with a ponytail and I've got one black girl with a bun. And you could have got the reverse. I could have got a white girl with a bun, black girl with a ponytail, and a couple more varieties. And then here we have the snakeling, which is, I guess, kind of a cobra combat engineer, perhaps. And uh, he was available in a bunch of varieties as well. So far, I've only picked up one, but I plan to probably get more in the future. Anyway, as neat as these guys are, they are really just background characters, and their looks are not particularly exciting. So all of these guys can go. Now, uh, here's Cobra Commander. This is Cobra Commander version 2, I think they were calling it. And it is just a straight repaint of the Cobra Commander we got last year in uh, Wave 1. He looks really good in these colors. It's a, like, it's a deeper blue, and he's got that like red undershirt, I guess. Um, so it's a nice looking figure, but I already have this figure. I got it last year in a lighter blue and everything, and it's, it hasn't changed enough to make it uh, a qualifier for Toy of the Year. Now we also have Mutt with his dog Junkyard. Will he make it to the end? Uh, unlikely, but I'm not ready to cut him yet, just yet because I think he looks great. He actually does a really good job of capturing his animated look, and the fact that he comes with a really nice version of Junkyard, probably the best version we've ever got. Um, that's probably going to make him stick around for a little while. Uh, here we've got Wolverine from Marvel's little five-point line as well. He's cool. I like Wolverine. This guy looks good. I like that he's actually shorter than the other characters in the line, which is true to the comic books. But uh, again, it's, it's a simple little figure, and he's not going to make the cut, so we'll get rid of him. I also have Green Goblin from that same line. You see he comes with his glider. He's having a little trouble standing up. But the Green Goblin is one of my favorite characters, so that gives him a leg up on 
Wolverine, and Vision. So he's going to stick around for a little while. You also see Venom from the same line. Uh, Venom is a really cool character. I think this is a really cool representation of him. Big and bulky, like he appeared you know, in his early appearances as drawn by Todd McFarlane. So great figure. But this guy's not going to go through, partially because they've made some excellent Venom figures in the 6-inch scale that I prefer. So I didn't really need this guy in my collection. Whereas I don't think they've made a perfect Green Goblin in the 6-inch scale yet. So this guy... Uh, I really kind of felt like I needed him as a, I wanted a good representation of an accurate, you know, comic accurate or cartoon accurate Green Goblin. I don't like some of the stylistic choices they've made on the six inch ones, but Venom, he wasn't as necessary. So he's going to go. Um, Firefly from G.I. Joe. We don't usually see him in these blue colors. He looks pretty cool, but not toy of the year. Flint. Oh man, he's really nice too. I feel if Duke could make it through on my first video, Flint has just as good a chance. He looks really good. So, yeah, let's keep him around for now. Um, we've got a couple laying down here. Let's address those guys. So we've got Baroness. Now, we got Baroness in Wave 1 of the G.I. Joe reaction, but this is a completely new design figure for Version 2. Like it's a whole new sculpt, new paint job. Looks really good. But... Um, yeah, again, these reaction figures, like I said, they just have a lot of heavy lifting to do if they think they're going to advance. Um, I had a Baroness in my top 10 last year from G.I. Joe Classified. So, um, yeah, this one doesn't have... She's not as good as that one, obviously, so I'm just going to have to eliminate her, I think. Snake Eyes as well. Like, everybody loves Snake Eyes. This is a cool look. Interesting that he's colored blue, which is kind of based off his animation. But, uh, yeah, not Toy of the Year. Gotta go. Bullseye, this is from Marvel's line. And this is a really cool figure. He came with a couple little Psy weapons and everything. But, uh, like Vision, I think this might have actually been a 2021 release. So, as much as I like him, I don't know if he would have advanced anyway, but I think he's disqualified. And what else? So, this is Boba Fett, as he appeared in The Mandalorian and his show. This is not a reaction figure, but it's actually made by Hasbro under their Kenner banner to uh, basically to match up with the old Star Wars toys you had when you were a kid. So it's called Star Wars Retro. They come on little blister cards. They only have the five points of articulation. Everything about them is supposed to match up with the vintage figures, and this one does it like perfectly. This guy looks awesome. I could have imagined owning this figure in like you know the early 1980s or something. And I really like this design for Boba Fett. So, great looking figure. Very nostalgic. I'm going to keep him around, I think, for a little while. Now, Roadblock. This is a funny figure because there was a regular Roadblock figure with a little bit more of a stern expression on his face. This one here it is based on the G.I. Joe PSAs. Um, so, he had like a funny, unique blister card and unique accessories. Um... But as much as it was like fun to receive this figure, Roadblock has just never been one of my favorite characters. And so, yeah, we're going to move on from him. Maybe we'll talk about some of these dinosaurs. So here you see, this is a Jurassic World figure. I can't even remember what he was called. A Miragia or something, I think, is the type of dinosaur he was. With these big kind of tusks and horns and scales. And, you know, he's cool. And he was relatively cheap. I think he cost me like 12 bucks. So yeah, I was on a little bit of a dinosaur kick and I picked him up and he is fun. You know, I've always loved dinosaurs. Who doesn't love dinosaurs? Um, but not Toy of the Year. He's just, he's kind of too small, too simple. He's not an iconic dinosaur or anything like that. So yeah, happy to add him to my collection, but he is not going to advance. Similarly, this guy here, I think he was called the Shringosaurus. You know, so he's articulated. He's got the articulated jaw and everything, which is cool. It's a fun looking dinosaur. Kind of reminds me of those... Uh, dog creatures from Ghostbusters. Um, but yeah, not a toy of the year, so he's going to go. I also have a couple of Funko Pops from Jurassic World in here. So this is one of the new dinosaurs they introduced in the movie called the Gigantosaurus. I considered buying the actual action figure of the Gigantosaurus, but he's he's really big, um, kind of like T-Rex size, and he's, you know, 75 bucks or so. 
So uh, I have not bought him. And instead, I just bought this whole Funko Pop. And I think the Funko Pop looks great. I think the uh, Jurassic Park dinosaurs actually look really good in the Funko Pop format. Super adorable, but uh, like the reaction figures, you would have to be one hell of a Funko Pop to make my best of the year list. So I think the Gigantosaurus can go. And probably similarly, I've got another one over here, if I can get to them. Damn it. This is the Therizinosaurus. So if you saw the new Jurassic World, this is the guy with the big Wolverine-like claws, and he was kind of bird-like. So I thought this guy was really cool in the movie. One of my new favorite dinosaurs. And he makes for a nice, colorful Funko Pop. Um, he's not going to advance. Although you might have noticed, I have the actual bigger version of the Therizinosaurus up here. So he's still potentially a qualifier. We'll get to him later. In order to keep them from falling down, I'm just going to sit these guys down for a little while while they wait as I go through some of these other figures. Um, you'll see here, this is Mamut. So this is the, I guess we'll call him an evil dog from Thundercats. This is part of Super 7's Ultimate Thundercats line. Now, if he was on his own, Mamut would be gone. However, he is a companion piece, just like Junkyard here with uh, Mutt. So Mamut is a companion piece to Mumra back here, who is a really big figure, really cool figure. So uh, Mumra is definitely not going anywhere. So Mamut, he's going to stick around as an accessory piece. So here's a couple more of Mezco's five points figures. This is Baragon, one of Godzilla's buddies. Um, this is a cool figure. He had a bunch of interchangeable parts, so you could change him from a biped to a quadruped if you want to put him down on all fours, and he had a different head and everything. Really cool. Again, I really like the uh, paint job on these figures. They're really nice. But uh, again, they're just, with five points of articulation and the size of them, they, uh, they're they just not likely to make my best of the year list. So I'm going to move on from Baragon. Similarly, this is Angaris. This is, I guess, what you would call Godzilla's best friend in the movies. He's really cool. He also had interchangeable feet and interchangeable heads. Um, he's he's spiky. He's hard to touch. It's a really cool sculpt. like it a lot, but not Toy of the Year. Rodan, similarly. Really cool, screen-accurate looking design. But Rodan's never been one of my favorite monsters. If Baragon and Angiris aren't going to get through, then Rodan certainly isn't. He's just kind of a big, goofy chicken. Um, so who else? There's still a couple more of them in there. This is Gorgosaurus. And he's basically just a dinosaur. But this guy, I'm going to stick around. I think he's very likely going to make it through to the next video. Why him? I, it's hard for me to put it into words. I love dinosaurs. I grew up loving dinosaurs, as I've already mentioned. And this guy just takes me right back to, not necessarily Gorgosaurus himself, but it makes me think of any of those old stop-motion dinosaur movies, The Lost World or whatever. Like, he just has that look of an old 60s dinosaur. And I love it. Like, the texture, the paint on him. He's just, he's really cool and really nostalgic. So he's going to stick around. Um, we've got a couple of He-Man figures here. So let's start with uh, Anti-Eternia He-Man. So this is a character who, uh, he's been previously released in the Classics format, but I missed out on him back then. So I was happy to be able to add him to my Origins collection. Uh, it's really cool. It's just He-Man painted in these black and red colors. I like him, but I don't like him that much. So he's going to go. Then we've got He-Man himself. Now I have got a bunch of different He-Mans in my Origins collection. Regular, Battle Armor, Prince Adam, uh... I don't know, a lot. I've got like five He-Mans now, I think. I've got uh, the 2000 era He-Man. I've got Snake Armor He-Man. This here is Flying Fists He-Man. And so basically he's got this kind of like vac metal armor and shield. And he's got this weird little spinning accessory. You know, I don't really get it. This is probably my least favorite design of all the He-Mans I have. It just, there's nothing special about it. So he's going to go. Now, even worse than that, there was a Skeletor released in that same wave of figures. This is Terror Claw's Skeletor, and he's got these big, giant add-on claws that go over his regular hands. I actually really dig that play feature, so when you swing him around, his claws, you know, he's, he swipes with you with his claws. I like that, but I just can't get over this glittery sports bra that he's wearing. It just looks ridiculous to me. 
So Terror Claw Skeletor is also going to go. All right. Now Moff Gideon. So this is from the Mandalorian. Uh, great character. Really nice toy. Uh, it's hard for me to get a good focus for some reason right now, but it's a really good actor's likeness for this guy. And uh, I think this figure might have come out last year. I passed on this character when he first came out, and then I eventually picked him up when he was on sale for like 75% off. But uh, he wouldn't have made it through anyway. He's just kind of too normal. He's like he's too human a character. I've said before that for Star Wars characters, I need them to be aliens or robots or something for me to really fall in love with them. So Moff Gideon wouldn't have went through anyway, but uh, especially since I think he's eliminated just because of his release date. Here's the Godzilla from Mezco's Five Points line. A great looking Godzilla. He had like a blast effect that attached into his mouth. There's a little hole back there so you could have this really cool like blasting effect come out. He had an alternate head, an alternate hands. Great design, great sculpt. However, it just doesn't bring anything new to the table for me. I already have so many Godzilla figures um, from uh, NECA that made a whole bunch of them over the past few years at the, a larger scale, just as detailed with the same type of accessories and everything. So even though I love this Godzilla and I'll keep buying Godzilla figures, uh, this guy's just not a top 10 figure for me. All right. Got a couple of Transformers here. A couple of Bumblebees. Now, I've said before, I am strictly a G1 Transformer fan, meaning I like the Transformers from the 80s. I don't really care for anything that's come afterwards, such as Transformers Animated, Transformers Prime, Michael Bay Transformers. And these guys here are Michael Bay Transformers. But... I do kind of like them. This one here, I think, is actually more from the Bumblebee movie, which I'm still not sure if it's connected to the Michael Bay verse or not, but I really liked the Bumblebee solo movie, and it made me want to reach out and try this figure. I like him. I like the size of him. It might be weird to say, but I really like the design of his feet. It looks like he has like sneakers on with laces or something. It's just a really cool design. So anyway, yeah, really cool and different from most of the other Transformers in my collection. So I picked him up at a sale that uh, Hasbro had on their website. And I also got this Bumblebee, which is him. He's supposed to be like a Jeep from like World War II era, I believe. And so he's very cool too. That's a, that's a neat little, uh, you know, I don't know, Elseworlds almost a Bumblebee. Because usually you see him as a little yellow car. So to see him as a different vehicle and different color, I really like it. But if any of these two is going to make it through, I'd probably go with the yellow Bumblebee. I really like that kind of mask design that he wears over his usual face makes him look like a bee i guess so both of these figures are cool but uh as i said in my first one of these videos i like all of these figures i don't typically buy figures i don't like so uh yeah i have to eliminate figures i like all the time so that bumblebee's gone this guy i might let stick around for a minute um i've got another transformer here this is also from the bumblebee uh movie this is brawn so this character, he was only featured for a minute at the opening scene when you saw the war on Cybertron. And I really liked that scene. I wish the rest of the movie, we got more of that. And uh, I begrudgingly liked the designs. Like, they're Michael Bay-esque, but they've walked them back quite a bit. That you can definitely tell that this is Braun. So he looks a little bit more like his G1 counterpart. Now, Braun was never a favorite of mine. But I think he looks really cool in this like round, bubbly shaped design. He transforms into a really funky little space vehicle. And uh, I just felt compelled to pick it up. I really like it. And it's just so different from any other Transformer. Uh, in my shelves, which I've got hundreds of Transformers, and they're all based on kind of the G1 look. The only thing, yeah, the issue, if I can zoom in close enough, is his face. I don't understand his face. It's hard for me to understand what's going on there. Like, does he have a mouth or a nose? I don't know, it's just, that's what I didn't like about the Michael Bay Transformers, is they just seemed to be a, like a mishmash of metal parts, and they weren't really coherent looking, it was hard to know what you're looking at. This guy, he's so perfect, except for his face. His face is a little too Michael Bay for me. I don't know, I, he'll probably get cut, but we'll, we'll see, we'll come back to him. Alright, some more Masters of the Universe characters. We got the Horde Trooper, cool character, but not going to make it through. Um, Sorceress, again, cool character, cool toy, looks great, but not going to make it through. 
Um, Clawful. Now, I really like Clawful. This is probably one of my favorite figures from the Origins line so far. Um, just because I like the character so much. I love that big, crazy, like, lobster claw he has. But this figure is just... It's so... It's so much like the vintage figure. It's... Uh, so yeah, it's nostalgic to go back and get these old toys, um, but there's just nothing different. I, I don't know. It's he, he's not going to make my toy of the year list, even though I really love this figure. Just not toy of the year. Uh, Sunman. Now he does bring something new to the table. So this is a character. I'm not going to get into the history about him because I've talked about him on a couple of videos before. But basically, he's a character that was integrated into the Masters Universe line this year. So he's like a new character, and. Uh, you know, I'm all about adding new characters to the line so we're not just buying the same characters over and over and over again. I think for a line to really grow, you've got to add some new characters every once in a while. And to add some, like, minority characters and everything, I'm all for that. Um, but Sun Man just doesn't grab me. I think uh, I, you can remove this weird feathery cape off of his neck and I think he'd look a lot better. But the fact of the matter is I, I just hate that stupid wing cape. I think it looks dumb. And otherwise, he's just not interesting enough, so... Sun Man is going to go, and I'm going to reshuffle the guys that we have here. So we've got a few Marvel Legends here, so let's take a look at them. So we've got this amazing Iron Man figure. Um, this is just a repaint of the anniversary Iron Man figure we got last year. Um, it's like the perfect Iron Man figure. However, it came out in 2021, so he is automatically eliminated. Scarlet Witch... I feel this figure possibly came out in 2021. Um, there was a previous version of Scarlet Witch in a three-pack with her uh, sibling Quicksilver and their father Magneto. Um, I think this is shares a lot of parts with that figure, but it might be a new head, and they released her on an individual card. Um, so she might be new this year. I don't know. But regardless, as nice as this figure is, and it's got a really nice head sculpt and everything, um, I just... Scarlet Witch is just not one of my favorite characters, so she's going to go. Jigsaw. This guy is like a Punisher villain, kind of a gangster guy. His face is all messed up. Great face sculpt. Looks fantastic. He came with all kinds of cool uh, accessories. You see I've got him holding a shotgun and a baseball bat. He also came with a machete and some blast effects and, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Cool figure. Happy to add him to my collection. But Jigsaw is just not a top 10 guy for me. So then we still have Spider-Man and Speedball. Now, like Sleepwalker that I talked about in my last episode, Speedball is a character that kind of came about in the 90s. And, uh, you know, he was in. He first appeared in a Spider-Man annual, actually. Then he had his own little short-lived series. And then he, uh, he kind of became cool, I would say, when he joined the New Warriors, which was like a teen super team. And uh, I've wanted a figure of him forever. I think this is the first Speedball figure ever released. And uh, so I've been really wanting this figure. He would have been very high on my want list if you'd asked me last year which uh, Marvel figures do I want the most. He probably would have been in my top 20. Um, and so I wish they'd just give, given us a more classic design on him. This is, uh, the, the goggles are a little bit more of a contemporary look. He used to have just a more traditional mask. And I feel like Speedball should maybe be a little bit brighter in his colors. So like Sleepwalker, I wanted this figure forever. He doesn't quite live up to my expectations, but, you know, I'm not ready to let him go. He's a, he's a character I've wanted for so long. Um, this Spider-Man, you, you would think I'd be sick to death of Spider-Man figures by now because I have so many of them. But uh, this black suit Spider-Man is perfect. Like, if you want a black suit Spider-Man, this is the figure to get. The proportions, the sculpting, the paint, like, those eyes. It's just, like, the perfect shape. It's so easy to get this wrong with just, like... They could have made his eyes just a little too big, which was what happened on previous releases. Spider-Man can be a little too skinny, which is also what happened on previous releases. This guy here is perfect. He is definitely going through the next round. There's no question about that. Uh, we got a couple more Masters of the Universe figures here. Um, we'll talk about Merman in a second. This is a mashup figure. So this is Randy Macho Man Savage the Wrestler. He's kind of wearing Man at Arms' armor, and he's got like a Hordak logo on his chest. These mashup figures are kind of fun, but uh, I think this is the last one I have to talk about. In my previous two videos, I had a couple of these guys. They're fun, um, but they're definitely not toy of the year for me. Merman. 
This is a little bit tougher. Merman is my absolute favorite uh, Masters Universe character, and he's one of my favorite characters just ever. <laughs> like, I love Merman. And uh, it's cool to see him get this new design. This is pretty different from any Merman we've seen before. This is from the Revelation cartoon that came out on Netflix last year. Um, however, it's just... The toy itself is kind of, I don't know, it feels kind of simple. It feels, again, more like a kid's toy than a collector's toy. Um, there's just something about it that doesn't quite hit me the way past mermans have. Um, and I don't I don't dislike this design or anything. I kind of like the scars and the missing eye and the bare chest and all that stuff. I think it's kind of cool. So I'm not sure what it is about this figure that's just, uh, you know, holding me back a little bit. But uh, I'm not going to eliminate him. I think uh, Merman, I'm going to push him through. In my last video, Walrus Man from Star Wars didn't make it through, which is crazy because Walrus Man and Merman are two of my favorite characters ever. So the fact that I eliminated Walrus Man is still kind of crazy to me. Merman, I'm going to let him live to fight another day. Um, you know, In the cartoon, he was voiced by Kevin Conroy, who's most famous for voicing Batman in the animated series. So the fact that we lost Kevin Conroy last month Maybe that's also making me a little bit more uh, sentimental towards this figure. So he's going to stick around. Okay, G.I. Joe. Now, uh, I love the G.I. Joe classified line. They are killing it. So this is the Cobra Bat, the Battle Android Trooper. This is the Alley Viper, the like urban Cobra Trooper with his shield. and They have all these weapons and knives and guns that can be sheathed on them. Bat had alternate battle damaged head and he's got these extra hand accessories he can swap out. Uh, I'm not even going to beat around the bush. These two guys are absolutely going to go through. Um, they are both contenders for best of the year easily. Roadblock, as I said with the reaction figure, Roadblock has just never been one of my favorite characters. Um, but this is an amazing Roadblock figure. Like the sculpt, the design, the face, everything. Like he just looks fantastic. I love like the texture you can see on his shirt and everything. Really cool. Um, I would maybe consider keeping him around, but this was an Amazon exclusive figure and he was really hard to get. It took me a couple of months before I was able to nab him on the secondary market. He was actually originally available in 2021. So for that reason, I have to exclude him from my 2022 list. All right, so where are we at now? Um, you can see back there I've got a couple Action Force guys. So we had a couple of them in the last video. Um, and neither of them made it through. So this here is Duster. And Duster is his code name, but this figure is actually based off the real life soldier slash MMA guy, uh, Tim Kennedy. Uh, the head sculpts on this guy, he had two different Tim Kennedy head sculpts. One with facial hair, one without. They both looked really good. However... Uh, I don't have any real attachment, even though I'm a UFC fan. I don't really follow Tim Kennedy. Uh, I almost, it almost seemed a little weird to me to have this guy just added to my toy collection. So I opted to display this figure with a Steel Brigade helmet in my collection. So now, as, as far as I'm concerned, this is just another Steel Brigade trooper instead of Duster. Um, the head sculpts were really nice. If you're a Tim Kennedy fan or whatever, like, great, great figure. All kinds of cool little accessories and bits on them. But, uh, yeah, this guy is not going to advance for me. So, yeah, we've got to say goodbye to Duster. So here is the other Action Force figure I have. This is the Scarab. And so he is a member of the Swarm, which is one of the factions. And uh, I love this figure. I'll just tell you right off the bat, I think it's fantastic. He's made up of, you know, mostly reused parts from the previous released Swarm Trooper, who was my number two figure last year. Um, and I think I like this version even better than the Swarm Trooper. I just love this translucent yellow head with the kind of like honeycomb pattern on it. It just looks really cool, really menacing. Uh, I love this guy. When uh, Bobby Valla first announced his Action Force line, this was one of the figures he showed. Now, we didn't get this guy in Wave 1 because the Kickstarter only reached a certain funding goal and we had to hit a higher goal in order to unlock this guy. So I was pretty disappointed when we didn't get this guy in Wave 1 last year. But, uh, you know, the fact that he released him this year, I was pretty excited about it. I actually bought two of this figure, so I have two identical ones. And uh, it was never really in question that this guy was going to advance to the next round, so we'll keep him around. 
Uh, I've got a couple more McFarlane Spawn figures here. So there's Haunt, who was a character that was co-created by Todd McFarlane and Robert Kirkman of Walking Dead fame. Um, they did the comic book together for a little while, uh, and now he's just been integrated into the Spawn comic book. He's like a recurring character there now. Um, so I was a fan of Haunt before he's even associated with Spawn. Um, I really like that now he's, uh, you know, he's in Spawn regularly. And I was happy to be able to get a figure of this guy. Um, but like I've talked about in the last video, I think McFarland's figures sometimes just have, the proportions just seem a little off to me. Like their bodies are a little long, their feet are maybe a little small. So, uh, you know, I liked this figure enough to pick it up. I was happy to add a haunt to my collection, but it's not a best of the year for me. And similarly, um, I think it was just my last video. It might've been round one or round two, but I had the Redeemer figure, which was this exact figure in blue and gold. This guy is called the Dark Redeemer. He's uh, He is a different character, but he wears a darker version of the same armor. And the first Redeemer didn't get through, and this one's not going to get through either for all the same reasons. Kind of wonky proportions, doesn't really stand up on his own. You know, so he's cool, but he's got to go. So King Ghidorah here. This is the last of the Mezco 5 points figures that I haven't talked about yet. So King Ghidorah is my favorite of all the Godzilla Kaijus. I love this guy. I was so happy to see him in uh, King of the Monsters, you know, recently when, uh, you know, because I've always loved him in the uh, the Toho movies, but, you know, he's a guy in a suit, and I just don't think he really lived up to his potential, so seeing him fully done in CG, you know, in a high-end, big-budget American film, I thought he looked great. I loved it, and uh, I love this figure. I love he's got those little electric blasts coming out of each of his mouths. Those are optional. Um, yeah, looks great. I love the color of it, the gold paint, everything. I don't know. It's it's really cool, but I just don't think he's he's gonna get through. He just he doesn't move enough. And also, I don't know. Maybe I have another little Ghidorah figure in my collection that I that I liked, and this one isn't that different from the one I previously had. It's a little bigger. The details a little bit better. But uh, honestly, I would love to have a gigantic Ghidorah figure in my collection. Like if I could get one you know, the size of that Kraken figure I talked about in my last video, then it would probably be Toy of the Year. Ghidorah seems like he, he just works better in a bigger scale. And to have this, like, little version of him, like, look at him compared to that dinosaur. He just seems too small. So because of his little diminutive nature, that's why Ghidorah is not going to get through. Now, speaking of that dinosaur, um, so that is the Therizinosaurus. I thought he was really cool in the movie. I've been reluctant to touch him in this video because the biggest strike I have against this figure is that it makes a ton of noise. It's got a play feature where if you uh, press the button on his back, he, uh, he roars. But really he does it whenever you move him around. Um, and it, yeah, you see what I mean? It's, and it's really annoying. So I'm going to try not to handle them too much. Looks really cool. I like these colors a lot better than the colors on the Funko Pop. I don't know which one is more screen accurate. Um, really cool. I love those claws. Great toy. But uh, I don't know. Where he's a dinosaur, he just doesn't have that personality that you know other characters like these guys would have. So uh, because he's just kind of an animal, it's not enough for me to push him through. Plus that noise feature really gets on my nerves. So let's get rid of the Therizinosaurus. This is Stridor, the Masters of the Universe Origins horse, or robotic horse. Really cool figure. He came with uh, like a little display base and lots of weapons, and you can put, your characters can sit inside of him, so he kind of works as like a vehicle as well as a character. Like the look of him, really cool, but uh, sort of like what I just said with the Therizinosaurus. This is just, like he's an animal. He's lacking some personality. Um... So yeah, he's going to go. I've been kind of dreading getting to this back row because I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, first off, I'll talk about Blaster here. Um, Blaster, so this is a Transformer figure from Hasbro. It's perfect. You know, it looks exactly like how I would want Blaster to look. Great uh, face sculpt. You know, he transforms into a Ghetto Blaster like he's supposed to, as opposed to like the last Blaster I had in my collection who transformed into like a Cybertronian tank. So in robot mode, he still kind of looked like Blaster, but you could tell he had extra kind of like wheels and stuff on him. And uh, I want my Blaster to turn into a Ghetto Blaster. 
The fact that he comes with, you know, his little cassette buddy that just, you know, adds to uh, the cool factor of this guy. So Blaster is definitely going through the next video. I'm not going to keep you guessing about that. He's awesome. But yeah, so these uh, these guys here in the back. Mumra from Thundercats. He's big. He's huge. He's got this giant sword. Look at that face sculpt. And he actually had two alternate head sculpts. Um, he's got all these like bandages hanging off him. He's got the cloth cape. It's wired so you can pose it. Um, if I had any strikes against him is that his parts are a little loose. Like his head actually doesn't stay on super well. His hands, he has interchangeable hands. They can fall out fairly easily. His weapon, it falls out of his hand. Super 7 sometimes struggles with quality control. They might be able to design an amazing looking figure. But uh, this figure is definitely going to get through on design alone. I can forgive some of those little imperfections because he just looks so damn good. So there was never any doubt that Mumra was going to get through to the next round. But uh, anyway, <laughs> these Transformers. Let's talk about these Transformers. So this is Wave 1 of Super 7's Ultimate Transformers. Except for the fact there's four figures in this wave. The other one was the Ghost of Starscream, which I didn't bother to pick up. Um, and I really was torn on these guys here because uh, they, they don't transform, which I'm fine with, but because of the quality control issues with Super 7, you know, I didn't know if these guys were going to be worth my money because as I've talked about with Ultimates before, these guys are about 75 to 80 bucks Canadian. They're very pricey. And I got to say, I was disappointed with this entire wave of figures. Like sitting here looking at them, they look great. They're big. They're bright, they're colorful, they're like cartoony, they've got lots of fun accessories, most of which are kind of useless, and I just threw them in my spare parts bin. So Super 7 tries to justify the price, I think, with their cool packaging and with their accessories. But when the packaging goes in the garbage and the accessories go in a bin, you're kind of left with just the core figure, and is this worth 75 bucks? And that really hinders my enjoyment of all these guys. So this is Bombshell, Bunzai Tron, and of course Optimus Prime with his little buddy Spike Witwicky on his shoulder. So these guys, the articulation is really limited on these guys. It's hard for me to show you with one hand here, but like Bonsai Tron, for example, his arms only go up that high. That's as high as you can lift them. You can't lift them out to his side. Bombshell as well, the shoulder pads limit his articulation. They can't really kick forward. They can't like really kneel down. You know, they can advertise them as having all these points of articulation, but those parts of our points of articulation are so limited, they have very little range of motion that they become almost like statues. So, I don't know. I feel like I could push all of these guys through because lack of articulation alone isn't enough for me to not push a figure through. Um, in my last video, I talked about how my Kraken figure got through and reaction figures get through with only five points. Um, like These guys move better than reaction figures, but not much more. Uh, I don't know. I could eliminate them all or I could push them all through. Um, I, I don't know. It's tough. I'm going to let them all stick around for now. These are the guys I still have. Why don't I reshuffle these guys and we're going to kind of make our final analysis. Okay, so I think I'm down to 19 figures here. Um, I'm still deciding on these three ultimates. Back there are my four locks. So Mumra, Blaster, Scarab, Alley Viper, oh, and Cobra Bat. So five locks back there. These are the guys I'm still considering. Um, let's take a look at these guys again. All right. So Mamut, he's well, he's through because he's an accessory of uh, of Mumra's. You know what? I think I've already got Duke representing GI Joe, and I think I like Duke better than Flint as far as these reaction figures go. So, uh, you know, it's it's unlikely Duke will even make it through to the end. So I think. We'll give him a chance, but we'll clear the way. We'll get rid of Flint and Mutt. As much as I like Junkyard there, cool little dog, but yeah, they're going to go. Also, Boba Fett. This is a really cool design for Boba Fett. I like how nostalgic this figure kind of makes me feel. But this is a character, as I talked about in my past video, I think in Volume 1, I still don't know all the figures I have coming this year because Christmas is still coming and I expect to get some figures from my uh, my brother and my wife and my friends. 
So I think one of the figures that I'm going to get for Christmas is Boba Fett in the six inch black series in this outfit. And, uh, you know, even though that one doesn't have the same kind of like retro fun of this one, I think of the two Boba Fett's, the six inch black series one with the more detail and the removable helmet, he would have a better chance of getting through. So I don't know for certain I'm going to get that figure, but I think I probably am. And so for that reason, I'm going to take my chance and get rid of this guy now. He's unlikely toy of the year. Um, and as much as I, I think these, you know, movie versions of Braun and Bumblebee are, um, I like how different they are and everything, but I'm still a sucker for the classic, you know, G1, like, blaster here. Um, so, yeah. I'm impressed with these guys, but not impressed enough for them to advance. So, I think those guys are going to go. Um, so these are the guys we're thinking about. Black Spider-Man's a lock. He's going through. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. You know, earlier in the year, if you'd asked me about these guys, I thought that Banzai Tron and Bombshell would have a better chance of getting through than Optimus Prime, just because Optimus Prime has so been there, done that. I have so many Optimus Primes in my collection, whereas I don't have any Banzai Trons. He's a pretty obscure character, and I'm all... All about the obscure characters. But uh, the articulation on these two guys is just so weak on their arms. And even as far as... Like, I really like Bombshell. He's one of the Insecticons. But they went with version 2 of Bombshell as opposed to version 1. If this was version 1, I think he would probably get pushed through. But uh, I think I'm going to cut both of these guys. And I don't know if Optimus Prime will make it to the end, but I think, you know, as time has gone on, I've had these guys for a few months, when I look at my collection, I don't know, I'm always, my eyes are always drawn to Optimus Prime. He's bigger, he's bright, he's the most recognizable, he's iconic. And, uh, you know, he's got the jetpack, he's got his little buddy there, like, he's just, he really looks like the animation model. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to push Optimus through. But Bombshell and Bunzai Tron are getting the boot. So that leaves us now with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven locks. And one, two, three, four considerations. Now I don't really have a set number that I have to whittle down to for each of these videos. Uh, I was thinking in 10 is kind of where I would want to be. So really, I don't have to get rid of one more figure to comfortably be at 10. But if I can get below 10, uh, even better. Um, you know what? I pushed Sleepwalker through, even though the figure just left me a little disappointed. And I think with Speedball, I'm going to eliminate him. I'm going to let Sleepwalker fight that fight for the obscure, obscure like Marvel character from the 90s. I can't imagine Sleepwalker and Speedball making it through to the end. So yeah, we'll leave that up to Sleepwalker. Speedball's got to go. Um, you know what? This Green Goblin, I, I love Green Goblin. Like Green Goblin is one of my favorite Marvel characters. Like top five for sure. Um, and I love this figure. I really think it's great. I think it captures Green Goblin in a way that most of the other figures I have of him just don't. You know, he's got his little glider there. He's just so fun. Oh, man. Yeah, I, th I think he's got to go through. Will he make it to the end? Who knows? Um, I don't know. I'm <laughs> Gorgosaurus, again, like everything I said about him before, He's he's just so fun and retro merman i'm gonna i'm gonna let him go through um so it's really now just kind of deciding if gorgosaurus joins those guys and why the hell not you know whatever okay so those are my guys so how many did i end up with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah so those are the ten that are going through to the next round Okay, so that was round three of my best of 2022 Eliminator video series.
So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Please comment below. I want to know if you agree with my cuts. If there's something else I should have taken into consideration, what would you have done? Um, we're halfway through now. Three more videos to go, and then we'll be down to my final 60 or so figures is how much I'm hoping to get down to, and then we can eliminate them down to the final best of 2022. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon for the uh, fourth volume of this series. Uh, until then, you know, have a good one. Ciao.